In this video, I'm going to talk about entries related to purchasing assets for your business. Specifically, I'm going to look at fixed assets, assets that you purchase for your business that you'll be using for a long time. So this could be buildings, equipment, furniture, vehicles, things like that. And I'm going to use the QuickBooks Online sample company just to demonstrate this, but this is a really general video with general accounting information. So you will be able to apply this knowledge to whatever program you use. And I am going to link a video I made that talks a little bit more about whether something is an asset versus whether something is an expense. So you could watch that video as well to get more knowledge. Before we get into the entries to purchase an asset, I want to briefly talk about accounting rules, debits and credits. So some of you may already know about debits and credits and can just skip over this part of the video, but some of you don't know what they are. Now, the nice thing about QuickBooks is you don't necessarily have to know about debits and credits to do the entries, but I'm going to talk about them today just because there are going to be those people that are in accounting and they do need the debit credit information. Okay, so first of all, debits and credits in accounting represent increases and decreases to accounts. That's all it is. In accounting, we have something called a T account, which is basically just a ledger for each account. And the debit side is the left side, any entries you make over here. And the credit side is the right side, any entries you make over here. And debits and credits are gonna represent increases and decreases, but whether it's an increase or a decrease on the debit side or the credit side, depends on the type of account. Basically, we're going to talk about assets. And when you add or increase an asset in your business, that's going to go on the debit side. So when you purchase an asset, it's a debit to that asset account. If you sell the asset or dispose of it, then you would do a credit to that asset account. And then checking accounts are also assets. So when you add to your checking account, that is a debit. When you subtract from your checking account, that is a credit. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about liabilities, which are debts. That actually is the opposite. You add to the debt of a business by doing a credit and you subtract from debt. When you make payments on the debt that subtracts from your debt, that is going to go on the debit side. With that being said, let's get back to our examples and talking about purchasing assets. First, let's do a really easy example. Let's assume that you are purchasing a piece of equipment for $5,000 and you're paying for it with your checking account. Now, if you're in QuickBooks, you can easily just click on new check if you're in wave apps, you would add an expense. Um, you could add an expense here as well, whatever your normal practices are. Basically you want to show that you are making a purchase. So I'm going to click on new check. Okay. So the bank account is going to be what account this money is coming from, what account you paid it from. So I'm going to choose checking. And under the category, I would choose the equipment account. And that's all there is to it. I would put my amount here and I might attach a receipt. I might put a description or something along those lines. And that's it. This is what I would do. Okay. So I'm just going to save and close. And I can see it in the checking account and that's all there is to it. And then let's look at the balance sheet real quick. So now I have $5,000 in the equipment fixed asset account. So this does not go on the P and L it goes right on the balance sheet. And then you would depreciate that over time. Instead of doing an expense or a check, 
you could also do a journal entry. So here's where I'm going to talk about debits and credits. So if I were to do a journal entry, I am purchasing equipment using a checking account. So both of those are assets. And according to the debit credit rules, if I'm adding to an asset, I do a debit. So I'm adding to the equipment of the business. So that would be my debit. And then I'm subtracting from the checking account. So that would be the credit. And then I would just save and close and that's it. So that is going to affect the accounting records exactly the same as recording a check. Now, if you're not an accounting person, you can use QuickBooks without knowing those debit credit rules because when you write the check, when you enter the check in QuickBooks, QuickBooks behind the scenes knows that that's a debit to equipment and a credit to checking. You don't have to even think about that, but I still wanted to put the journal entry in there for those of you that want to see that side of it. Now let's go back to the report. Look at the balance sheet. So now the equipment account is $10,000 because I have a check and a journal entry for the exact same amount. So I'm going to just click on this $10,000 and drill down to it. Obviously in real life, you would only want to do one entry, one or the other, but because I was demonstrating it, I did both. So in real life, I would just simply remove the duplicate entry. Now, some of you may be asking why is that not on my profit and loss? I spent money on it. It should be an expense of the business. So what you would do at this point is depreciate this asset for it to be an expense. Okay. Now depreciation is a whole video in itself. So I don't want to get too in depth and I will at some point make a depreciation video. Um, I just can't right now because I had to switch around my house. I had to shift some things around. And at this moment, I don't have my whiteboard available to me. And depreciation is something that is like something I need to write out on a whiteboard. But um, basically all depreciation is, is is transferring the cost of something to expense over time. And you would probably work with your tax preparer to do those depreciation entries. Okay, for my second example, we're going to assume that you are purchasing the equipment, but this time you're purchasing equipment and taking out a loan. So maybe you're putting a down payment on the piece of equipment and then the rest is going to be paid over time with a loan. So this time we would have three things going on. We would have the down payment coming out of checking. We would have the cost of the equipment and we would also have a loan, a note payable or some other type of loan. So I created a note payable account dash equipment right here. I'm going to do it as a journal entry first so I can talk about debits and credits. Okay, so let's say the equipment is going to cost $25,000. So that would add to the equipment account, which is an asset. So it would go on the debit side to add to it. And then we would have a down payment, which would come out of checking. So we are gonna subtract from the checking account for the down payment amount. So let's just say it's $2,000. And then the rest of it is owed as a note payable. So remember, note payables have the opposite rules, opposite debit credit rules as assets. So when you add to your debt, it is a credit. They are increasing or adding to the debt of the business by taking out this loan. So it is going to be a credit. When they make payments, it's going to be a debit. Okay, so I'm gonna save and close. And I'm gonna also show you what that would look like if it was a check. Um, so first of all, you would have the check for the equipment. 
Now you write, might write the check by itself. You could add a line for the note payable if you wanted to, but most people are gonna do a separate journal entry. So you would write a check for the down payment. Now, obviously you need, you don't have your full picture because you wanna show the whole 25,000 not the 2000. So I'm gonna actually remove the previous entry that I just made. So at this point, you have equipment of $2,000 recorded, but the equipment is actually $25,000. So you have to record the other 23,000. So I would click on add a journal entry and I would debit equipment for the $23,000 and credit note payable. And that's it. And then I also very briefly want to talk about when you make payments on this note, how that's going to look. So basically more than likely you're going to be paying interest and principal. This 23,000 is going to be the principal. So when you make a payment, you do need to split that payment between the principal you're paying, which is going to be your note payable account and then the interest expense that goes along with that. So let me just make an entry for the first payment so you can at least see what it looks like and then you can probably take that from there. Let's just say your payment is $1,500 a month. You're gonna wanna split that between the principal amount of that and the interest amount of that, which may change every month if it's an amortization schedule. So let's just, for example purposes, say, that the principal part of the payment is $800 and the interest portion is $700. So that's what your payment would look like each month. You would look at the statement, figure out how much of it was principal, how much of it was interest, and do your entry accordingly. That way your note payable amount in your software is gonna match what is on the statement after the payment. Um, so I'm just gonna save and close this. So you can see that it decreased the equipment by $800, which was the principal payment. So I just wanted to throw that in here just so you know how to do that moving forward. So let's just look at the balance sheet after we did all of that. So we have the $25,000 total equipment cost, and that was done in two entries, the down payment entry and the loan entry. And then under liabilities, you're gonna have the liability, the debt. Here's the note payable equipment account. And this should reflect your loan balance after any payments that have been made. In this case, I'm gonna click on it. I show the 23, I show here the 23,000 original loan minus the principal payment. And just in case you want to see the journal entry for that principal interest payment, I'm going to do that real quick. It would have been a deduction from checking, which would have been a credit for 1500 a debit when you pay, make loan payments, that would be a debit to the loan account. And the interest is a debit. Expenses, when you add to expenses, that's a debit. Um, so if you had done a journal entry for that payment that I just showed in a check, this is what it would look like. Um, I'm not going to save this though because I already have the entry in here and I don't need to do that. And then I just want to briefly mention something. In accounting, if you're an accounting student or you're researching accounting online to try to figure out how to do some of your own entries, you may come across the word capitalize and I just want to briefly mention that capitalize just simply means to record it as an asset as opposed to recording it as an expense. And if you're purchasing a piece of equipment, you might want to know what costs are capitalized. How much of that purchase is capitalized or in other words recorded as an asset versus how much of it is expensed. Because when you purchase something, you're not always just gonna have the cost of the item. 
You may also have things like sales tax on the purchase. You might have to install it. You might have to pay for training to train your employees. You might have to have someone come in and train your employees. Um, you're probably gonna have to pay shipping, delivery, anything like that. So basically any cost related to that asset that are associated with getting it ready to be used are going to also be included in your cost that you record as an asset. So if you pay $25,000 for a piece of equipment, but then you have to go pay a company $3,000 to install it or $3,000 to train your employees on using that piece of equipment, then $28,000 would be your total cost that you would put in the asset account. And you may not even pay all the money to the same person. You may pay a separate shipping company or a separate installation company. It, it's gonna vary, but the point is, is if it is a cost related to getting the asset ready for use, then, uh, then generally you would include that as part of your asset cost. And yes, that would be depreciated as well. Now, if you're buying something for after it's placed in use, something that's gonna be used after the equipment is in place, then that's different. That would probably be more of an expense. So this can be a little bit of a gray area. I wanted to just mention this just in case you run into this in your research. Um, so this can also happen when you have a property purchase Basically, when you purchase a property, you have closing costs and things like that. A lot of those closing costs you would consider part of your property purchase cost also. Um, so this is definitely something that I hope to make a, another video about in the future. And I just haven't delved into some of these topics in depth yet. And then just really briefly, I'm gonna show you what a journal entry for depreciation might look like. So let's say you bought this $25,000 piece of equipment and your tax preparer told you that you will need to depreciate it by $5,000 in this year. So you would do a journal entry. Depreciation is a debit to depreciation expense. So this is the part that actually goes on your profit and loss and a credit to accumulated depreciation accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account and it's going to be subtracted from the cost of that asset and let me show you that it's easier to show you so if i go to the balance sheet now i see that it shows me the equipment but then it's subtracting accumulated depreciation on a separate line and that balance is going to keep growing until the asset is fully depreciated. So you're always going to have the $25,000 beside the equipment account until you get rid of the equipment. But then you have the accumulated depreciation being subtracted from that. So it's offsetting the equipment account. And then real quick, we'll look at a profit and loss. And here is the depreciation expense. Um, that's basically it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And otherwise, make sure you subscribe for more accounting videos. And thank you so much for watching.